God, we love you and we thank you for this uh, gift of a new day. Uh, we just ask as we come together around your word that you would encourage us and challenge us and help us, Lord, uh, as we prepare our hearts for all that you have for us both today and this week. Uh, we love you and we thank you for this time together in your name. Amen. One of the things that has really amazed me uh, about, about Indonesia, um, and, and I, I really say this with um, a great deal of, of respect, I, I, um, I have been amazed um, at the way traffic operates here. It's, it's really pretty impressive. Uh, but there's one thing in particular that I've that I've noticed that um, has really just Im impressed me, and that is uh, how powerful how powerful a person's hand is. And and just let me say, if you've if you've uh, like this this impresses me about about indonesia but if you've never been to america please do not try this there you will get killed i i i've been amazed like if you're on the back of a motorbike all you have to do is and you can go to any lane you want without without looking as long as you're doing this <laughs> like any lane like you don't have to look you don't have to honk you don't have to tell anybody just And I'm like, did that person really just come over three lanes on me? Yes, but they were, <laughs> right? Or if, if you want to cross a busy street, there is no need to go down to that little traffic light that has the person on it that says, walk across here. You merely step out in the street in front of traffic and... It's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. I mean, I, 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 I am amazed and inspired by it. it. It is impressive. If you ever go to America, please, friends, do not try that there. You will, you will die, right? You will die. But it is, it is impressive how powerful just those little, little, motions, little motions are here. Um, Today, uh, we're going to start a series on this, this guy named Elijah, um, and we're going to see some pretty impressive and powerful stuff about, about, this, guy's, about this guy's life. Um, and and here's, here's the real temptation when we, when we read about somebody like this is, yeah, but he was Elijah. Um, we're talking about me here. Uh, yeah, that was a great story for Elijah. That was a great story for someone in the Bible. But how does that apply to me? Well, um, James, James 5 tells us Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three and a half years. I want you to just get that in your spirit as we start this series. Elijah was a man. He was a person just like us. And, and there is, uh, there's this, I think, something we do at times where we look at a person like this and we're like, yeah, but the power that he had, you know, it was just on another level than what, what we have uh, at our disposal in our life. It, it's, it's a power that we, we are not capable of doing the kind of things that, 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 that he did. Uh, but, but James tells us he was a man just like us. So we're going to see some things about Elijah that are going to amaze you. You're going you're gonna to look at these stories and you're going to be like, how did he do that? Right? Well, how, how did he do that? How did he cross that busy street? Well, that looked like incredible power, right? But what we read in his life, we will see, is the same way that God has equipped us for the challenges of, of this life. So these first four sessions, we're going to talk about Elijah's prayer life. And 
there is just some amazing insight that we get from Elijah's prayer life. But then, um, and, and then the w- week after that, we'll talk about cultivating intimacy with God. And then the, the, the two weeks that followed that, uh, so I guess that would be the, the sixth and seventh week, uh, we're going to be talking about depression, all right? And, and I, I, love, I love that the Bible gives us stories of these great people like Elijah who did pretty amazing things. And yet it also gives us insight to their shortcomings. It gives us insight into their struggles. And Elijah, like many prophets of God in the Bible, struggled with with depression. Uh, And so uh, I think we can find out Really easy from Elijah, some, some great ways that we can get depressed. If you've ever said, I've never been depressed, but would like to be depressed, Elijah can teach us how to get depressed. Anybody excited about that? But also we find, we find in Elijah's life, um, uh, God's, God's prescription for overcoming depression. And, and so um, if you've ever struggled in that way, um, I, I just want to encourage you uh, to stay with us in this in this series because I believe that's really going to help you. Uh, I know depression is something that I, I've struggled with in my life years ago. I know how real and how hard it can be, and yet I know the power of God in helping us overcome uh, something as dark as depression. So that's, that's a little bit of where we're going to go, uh, by means of introduction for this, uh, for this CU. So, um, uh, hang in there. And I, I believe that God will use this to encourage your life in some way. Well, we're going to be in, in first Kings 18 today. And, um, this is a, this is an amazing, an amazing story. Let, let, let me just say that Elijah had just, finished up one of the greatest runs of, of just miraculous and awesome things that could ever happen to a person. I mean, like he had just, he just experienced some really cool stuff. And in, in, uh, first Kings 17 and 18, we read about these, uh, in, se- in, in chapter 17, he had, he had, uh, proclaimed a drought to, to King Ahab and, you know, I mean, can you imagine the nerve of, of someone going up to a king and saying, hey, it's not going to rain here. Uh, it's, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain for three and a half years. I mean, and, and yet Elijah spoke this and, and sure enough, uh, the, the, the sky shut up and it did not produce rain. Um, we, we find him literally uh, being sustained by, by the Lord as he camped out by a brook and was was fed by ravens, I, I've often wondered what does this this look like uh, being being fed by ravens. Uh, you know, I, it's amazing how the Lord will provide for His people, um, and and we find this in the in the life of Elijah. He was. Uh, he was also in a time when he was hungry, didn't have a place to stay, was, was provided for by a widow lady. Uh, it was here in this widow's house where she said, I don't have any, any, any bread or any oil. And so God did this uh, miraculous miracle through Elijah of, of providing bread and oil for this lady. It was almost like the loaves and fishes that just kept multiplying. This lady, this lady literally had this unlimited, unlimited um, uh, supply of bread and oil uh, throughout the entire drought and, and famine in this land because Elijah spoke this over, over her life. Just an incredible miracle. The same lady's son died and, and she was distraught. Elijah went up into to his room and and uh, literally just threw himself on top of this dead boy's body, and life came back into this, into this dead boy's body. So Elijah resurrected someone uh, from the dead through the power of, of God. That's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, then, then we go to, to 1 Kings 18, and we see him with one of the greatest miracles uh, in, in the Bible when he stood toe-to-toe with 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. And, and the, the 
there was this challenge that that uh, the the prophets of Baal uh, would call upon their god. There were two two bulls on an on an altar, and they said whichever whichever god will consume this sacrifice with fire, we'll know that's the one and true God, right? And so the, the, the prophets of Baal just went through all kinds of rituals trying to get fire to come down and consume this sacrifice on this altar to no avail. And in fact, uh, Elijah began to taunt them and, and uh, where's your God at now? You know, and, and he was really letting them have it. This is one of those instances in Elijah's life where we see a lot of confidence, right? As he's, as he's talking to these prophets of Baal. It's so funny because in these moments like this, uh, he, he has all this confidence toward the prophets of Baal. And then we'll see moments later, he's literally running from his life because he's fearful of, of Ahab. But in this moment, he had all kinds of confidence and, uh, and, 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 and the Living Bible, the Living Bible, I read this as a kid and I just always thought it was so funny. Uh, in, the, in the Living Bible, it literally says that Elijah taunted them and said, perhaps your God's on the toilet relieving himself. And that's, not, that's why he's not showing up in this moment. You don't think it's as funny as I did that when I was a kid and read that. I've always remembered that since I was a kid, though, because I thought it was great. So if you ever want to get your kids' attention in your class... There's a story of people being challenged about going to the bathroom, right? So that's awesome. Um, so, so then Elijah called down fire from heaven, and he prayed one of the most amazing prayers that is recorded in the Bible. And, and we know that fire came down from heaven and consumed, uh, consumed the, the, the sacrifice uh, that, that was before him. Um, so it's just amazing. And then immediately following this, uh, in, in 1 Kings 18, it says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. In other words, right after this, this miracle on Carmel took place, Elijah saying, Hey, it's time for this drought to be over with. It's about to rain. Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there. He said seven times, Elijah said, go back. Seven times. I mean, at what point does this servant not say, you're losing your mind? I've already, I've already been there four or five times. I've already been there six times. The sky looks the same. Uh, but the seventh time the servant replied, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the, from the sea. I love the first part of, of this, this verse, and we're actually going to dissect these, these three verses over the next few weeks. But uh, Elijah, Elijah bent down, it says in verse 42, to the ground and put his face between his knees. Even after this great, great uh, victory on Mount Carmel, you would think he's, he's riding high now, right? Um, when, it, when it comes time to pray, he could do it with confidence and he could just look up to the sky and say, sky, rain. You know, I mean, it, there would just be this incredible confidence upon his life. Maybe he's, maybe he's feeling it here as a prophet. He's got the, the prophetic mojo going on, right? But no, it says that he bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. I believe that we learn in Elijah that effective prayers are humble prayers. Effective prayers are humble prayers. James 4 tells us that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. Uh, the late conductor Leonard Bernstein was, was asked... What was the most difficult instrument to play? And without hesitation, he immediately said, without question, it is second fiddle. He said, I can find any number of people to take first chair on the violin. He said, but it is hard to find someone to play second fiddle with enthusiasm. And he said, yet without it, we have no harmony in our, in our orchestra. He said, it is, it is so, so very, very important and yet such a hard seat to fill. I think many times it's hard for us to take that position of humility 
in life. But I love when Elijah came to this prayer that, again, he prayed with great humility, put his face between his knees as he sought the Lord. We find some of the greatest prayers in all of Scripture were humble, humble prayers. Think of Mary of Bethany, who in John 12 um, just freely, freely offered herself so humbly before the Lord. Uh, when she clothed herself in humility at the, at the feet of Jesus and poured perfume and anointed Him with, with perfume that day. Um, let, me, let me move quickly because I want to get through our points. And I've got too much information here. Sorry for that. But uh, let me just give you four points on, on praying with humility. If we're going to truly pray with humility, we need to pray with a worshiping heart. Um, a worshiping heart. Psalm 100 says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise to His name. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. We see this in the life of Elijah over and over again, and we'll see it modeled in his prayers. But when he, when he would come to the Lord, and, and there would be this sense of awe and worship. Of, of, of his God. I mean, it was like all, all worship to him. He is worthy. He alone is worthy of, of, our, of our worship. Um, I love, I love that, that song that's out now. It's, I probably love it because it's one of the only songs I can memorize because it's like two lines. Uh, and I probably still haven't memorized it right. But that... So many times I'll, if, if I'm going through something, I'll just turn on that song that talks about this is how, this is how I fight my battles. Right? This, is, this is how we fight our battles, with surrenderance unto the Lord. We, we worship. When things are going wrong around us, we worship our Lord. We give praise to our God. And we see this in Elijah when he's surrounded by 450 uh, prophets of Baal. Uh, on Mount Carmel, he 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 still had this unbelievable heart of worship towards towards God. Even when it hadn't rained for three and a half years, he still bows in reverence and worships uh, his his God. And I will say to you, when everything is going wrong in your life, our God is still worthy of our praise and our our worship. So we come before Him with a worshipful heart. Secondly, we come before Him with a grateful with a grateful heart. Uh, Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude uh, in, your hearts, in your hearts to God. My father, who really isn't a, isn't a believer, taught me how important it is to have a grateful heart. Uh, when he was laying in a hospital, uh, he's been disabled ever since I, well, before I was alive. He was, he was disabled in a motorcycle accident, and um, which some of you would say, then why do you drive so fast on your motorcycle uh, or on your motorbike? But uh, it, it's a good question. Um, but, but he was in the hospital, and uh, years later, while I was, uh, while I was uh, alive, he, I was visiting him. Obviously, I was alive if I was visiting him. Um, and, but he was, he was there because he had something happen in his back that was related to the accident that he had had years before. And there was a man that was brought in um, that, was, that was a paraplegic, and he, and he just literally had no movement in, in his entire body. But he would, he would sit there with a smile on his face and have such a positive attitude. And I remember my father saying to me, he said, you know, he said, before this guy came in into my room, he, he said, I had no hope. And he said, in fact, there were many, many days that I sat in this hospital room and I wanted to kill myself. He said, but when this guy came in, there was a joy in his heart. He said that I, I had to begin to approach my days different, differently, realizing that I have something to be so grateful for. Uh, even though I'm not in the best of shape and my body is broken in so many ways, 
said, I don't take pleasure in that someone's got it worse than me. He said, but this guy does have it a lot worse than me, and yet he still has a joyful attitude. So he said, I will approach each day with a greater sense of, of gratefulness for the gift of this day because many people do not have it. I, I think all of us need to approach every day with this idea of, of thankfulness unto God and gratefulness unto God. Um, and certainly in our prayer life, we, we can approach, approach the throne of grace with an attitude of gratefulness unto our God because even the, the poorest among us would be the richest among some peoples on this earth. Even those who think we have it the worst, we have it better than a lot of, a lot of people in this world. Even those among us who would say, man, I'm going through so much, yeah, but we are still standing. And because of that, we can be grateful to our God that even in the midst of calamity, He has sustained us. So we come before Him with a grateful heart and quickly an abandoned heart. Um, we Humble prayers come from an abandoned heart. Go back to Jesus in Luke 22 who said, Father... Uh, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. If there's any way for me not to go to the cross, that would be awesome. Nevertheless, my heart is abandoned to doing your will. So nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Um, what a powerful, powerful, uh, humble prayer that Jesus prayed in that garden. And lastly, uh, an obedient, an obedient heart. An obedient heart. Uh, Philippians 2, 8, And being found in the appearance of man, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. All right. So let me just let me just close. If we can bow our heads and close our eyes. Sorry that I went a little long today, but let me just pl uh, uh, close with this uh, quote by Ian Bounds as a prayer. That, that which brings the praying soul near to God is humility of heart. That which gives wings to prayer is lowliness of mind. Pride, self-esteem, and self-praise effectually shut the door of prayer. He who would come to God must approach the Lord with self hidden from, with self hidden from his eyes. Humility is a rare Christian grace of great price in the courts of heaven, entering into and being able, or, or being an inseparable condition of effectual praying. It gives access to God when other qualities fail. Its full portrait is found only in the Lord Jesus. Our prayers must be set low before they can ever rise high. God, help us to come before You humbly every day of our lives. And when it comes to prayer, Lord, let us be set low that we might be made high. We love You and thank You in Your name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.